What's up, everybody? Welcome or welcome back to the That Talk podcast. If you're watching on video on YouTube, I have Michael Ivanov sitting across from me. Author, here is his newest book. I'll have Michael introduce his newest book to you guys. Hey, what's up, guys? So, cabin at the end of the train. This is my uh, latest work. So, if you know, uh, all my books are written in uh, as a fictional story, and this is part fiction, part part of my story. So, cool. I sh yeah, it's the first one that I'm actually writing as myself through my journey of speaking, writing that kind of a thing. Um, but the actual story. Uh, the characters and the people I meet on it. Uh, that's all fiction. Awesome. Cool. So again, I'll show it um, on camera one more time. And um, Michael is an author. This is his fourth book. And Michael is a speaker as well. So Michael is one of the first people that ins inspired me um, as far as like actually getting into speaking. I've always been into like motivational speaking. I always like loved, I think wordplay was one of the one of the things that actually intrigued me most about speaking was like the metaphorical aspect mm. of it and like music in general. Like I, I love hip hop music just as far as like the metaphors and everything. And then I saw ET was my first, Eric Thomas was my first introduction to motivational speaking. And then mm. I actually tracked you down. Um, someone actually like, you know, that I could like reach out and touch that was actually doing what I wanted to do. It was pretty cool for me. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself, kind of what you do, who you are, uh, tell us a little bit of your backstory because you know I don't I don't want to um I don't want to you know chop that up and and you know sure, <laughs> miss sure. part. So <laughs> go ahead. So Michael, let everybody know who you are and uh, you know a little bit of your background. Yeah, sure. So now uh, just uh, over the last year, we my wife and I went officially a uh, full time speaking and writing. So for a long time, for a couple of years, we were doing it where I was getting you know speeches here and there, um, working on the books, trying to promote the books. Um, but we were still doing, uh, our IT business as well, working with my brother. And we still have a little bit of that going on the side just because it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, no need to end it. But this, this last year was the first year where my wife actually quit her job. She was just, uh, at her, she was managing a storage unit. So they kind of gave her an ultimatum. Like, Hey, you're missing too much work yeah. traveling with Mike, you know, either you quit or, you know, we need you full time. So she's like, all right, um, I'm out. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And we still got a long way to go. Um, you know, as far as the speaking thing and booking our schedule out to the way to where we want it to be. But, um, yeah, I just blessed to say that we, you know, we're doing that full time and the way I got into speaking, you know, cause it's kind of like a thing, you know, it's like, you don't hear very often, like a motivational speaker, you know, yeah. usually it's somebody who is a previous athlete or a celebrity or something like that and gets into, you know, speaking. And for me, uh, my journey kind of, Started, I was working in a, in a, basically in a cubicle, uh, working a corporate job, working for a small printing company, uh, depressed, just, it was just like, it got to the point where I was just like, you know, I come in on Monday, I'm just counting down, down the days till Friday, that kind of a thing. It's just like. The life that 99% of people live. Exactly. Yeah. And I only, I got there. I even, I went to school, you know, I, I got uh, some uh, a degree in a computer applied science, whatever the degree was, just an associate's degree and, and got that job and just had the plan of like, well, I'm just going to keep advancing. I'll just keep learning more about it. I'll get a better position, higher pay, maybe a better company someday. But at one point I realized none of that, what I was doing was what I wanted to do. I, everything I was doing at that point in my life was just because, well, all my friends are going to school now, so I better go to school. All my friends, you know, I better just, I was just doing it. Mm just because that that's what people were saying, you know, I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And it was a blessing in disguise because when I was sitting in that cubicle and I started realizing like, holy crap, like what the hell am I doing with my life? I'm like, even if I go to a better job, even if I advance somewhere, like I'm still not, this IT stuff is still not what I want to be doing mm -hmm. with my life. I like, I feel like I have more gifts, more ideas to offer to the world than, than what I've been doing. And so um, that's what started everything. I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I, that's a very, very important part. I feel like of, of my message in general and in, in the podcast. And I want to, I want to talk to you about that real quick. Do you tell me a little bit about that? Um, you know, in a world where everyone is like, you know, we're, we're sick, you know, because we're sad and, you know, we're depressed and this is like mm -hmm. clinical issues. Like, can you, break down a little bit what you were feeling in in during that time because i my belief is in what i promote is that when you know that inner voice and obviously that was speaking to you like mm -hmm. this doesn't feel right i know that this isn't for me like there's yeah. something out there greater i have more to give can you argue or you know or talk to me about or you know what are your thoughts on 
that is the depression, right? Mm -hmm. That is the sadness. That is like when you know something and I always say like your conscious is a compass to fulfillment. Like yeah. it's, it's talking to you. Right. And yeah. I think the further you get off the path, the more the pain magnifies. And, mm -hmm. and, um, can you speak a little bit on that? Cause I think obviously that just aligns with my message so perfectly what you were talking about. Yeah. I believe you're, you're, when you become disconnected with, with who you are, with what drives you, with your gifts, your skills, you know, your talents, when you become disconnected with that, you're, it's like, it's like yanking the plug on a, you know, on your, on your desk lamp here, yeah. you're, you're cutting out the light, you're cutting out the light that you, mm. only you have to bring to the world. I love that. And, you know, I'm saying disconnect. Some people don't even, have never even connected to that. And I think that's, that was me. It was, I, I've, I've, I've never had anything in my life besides, you know, I grew up in a good family, really close. And so I had that kind of life force, you know, all my life, but I still needed something to do with my time. Like, yep. you know, what, what did I have to offer to the world? Like, you know, you know, where can I stand out? You know, I'm part of a big family, so I'm in a, I've always been in a good group, but what, where am I an individual? Like, what do I have? What does Michael yep. have to offer to the world? What are my gifts, skills, talents? And so that was that big thing. I knew I needed to connect to something that wasn't just for income, wasn't just for, you know, because that's what everyone does, you Mission. know, exactly. Mission, I needed yeah. to connect to something a lot bigger and that's kind of where my, my search started. So the, it's really funny because <laughs> the way that my personal development journey started was because we got invited into, uh, into an MLM. And so, you know, I'm not bagging on MLMs, yeah. but you know, it didn't work out for us, but because we were, we joined this MLM and it, I, I totally failed on it. I, I did terrible. I was not a salesman. I, I couldn't do it. But going to conferences and being surrounded by people who were talking about yeah. you don't have to give yep. all your time, you know, to your job. Like they were talking about time freedom, all these concepts that I, you know, didn't you, really. You, you aligned with those. Exactly. Like it wasn't like it was a, it was a great introduction. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. And they always pushed personal development books and things like that. And that's what got me into reading and reading changed everything for me. And yeah, the, the book that specifically did that was an Ogmandino book. It was called The Better Way to Live. And you know, in the book, he's just talking about his journey. He has a crazy story, but he's just talking about his journey and writing and how he's been impacting people and how he's taken a cab. What was stuck out to me specifically was speaking. And that's what started everything for me. He's riding in a cab and the, his cab driver is like, Oh, you're Augmentino. Like you transformed my life. And he was going to a conference or something like that. And I'm like, imagine that living that kind of life. He's yeah. like 80 years old at that time. And he's somebody recognizes his work you know, he's impacting the people, you know, impacting the world, going around speaking, his books are, imp and I'm just like, man, if I could do that, like, that's, like, that's purpose, man, like that, I could do that. And I think, and, and what's crazy is I think that, you know, whatever, whoever, everybody believes in God, the universe, you know, whatever it may be, I think that that is wired in us to have that fulfillment when people say stuff like that, because I think, mm. Uh, you know, Nipsey Hussle said inspiration is the greatest form of currency. And mm. I think that that's wired within us. So we're able to do things like you do, right? Mm. Write inspirational books, speak, you know, have, being an inspirational speaker, I, because I believe that's what makes the world turn, right? Yeah. That's what every generation, right? Or every, every, I guess you could just say every generation is to evolve, right? And, yeah. and do things better than the generation before and then pass it down to the generation under that. And then we continue to evolve and evolve and evolve. And I think that fulfillment and that happiness and that shot that we feel when people say like that, that is wired in us. So that's what we pursue, right? Because yeah. I think that if we, if that wasn't there, you, like you said, you know, you'd keep going with, well, I don't want to do something for, you know, just for money. I don't want to do something that, that obviously I'm unfulfilled in doing like, and when yeah. you felt that feeling, right. Or yeah. that sparked in you and you were like, wow, imagine that. Yeah. And that's the same thing I feel. I'm like, wow. Imagine somebody coming up to you and, you know, saying you changed my life based upon how you think. Yeah. How cool, bro. Yeah. Like how cool. Yeah, um, so that's, that's, that's kind of what got you any... into speaking and stuff. Right. So yeah. let's, let's jump into that. Yeah. So uh to, to take it back even a little bit further I'm, I'm not a natural speaker man like trust me i'm not a natural born i don't i don't even believe that there's such a thing as a natural talented speaker anyone who says they're naturally talented at speaking is you know probably doesn't have anything important to say no offense 
um, you know, I was, well, I, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's because I, I always hear people are like, oh, I can get up and talk about anything. And it's like, and yeah, you probably can. And you'll talk about nothing for an hour, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think, um, I think speaking is a, it's, it's a skill that can be acquired. And I think it's a skill that, that people, I mean, yes, there's some people that are better communicators, but that's because maybe they've, the way their parents communicated with them, they've picked that up along the way. So anyway, I was not a natural speaker not even a communicator man like uh, i still mumble i'm still working on you know on that kind of things but uh when i was uh i had to take a uh, communications class in college and it was i was 18 years old at the time and it was supposed to be like a three minute speech was our first assignment and i get up there and like a minute and a half into the speech like i black out like i don't know I don't know what I just said. I don't know what I'm supposed to say next. I mean, if you asked me my name at that point, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you. Like, I mean, I was just, just like my vision went blurry. My ears were red. My Crazy. face was burning. Yeah, yeah. And I got, you know, the whole class is like looking at me and I just, middle of the speech, I just walked out of the classroom. I went, yeah, I went to yeah. my uh, counselor and I dropped a class. I'm like, dude, I'm never coming back. I'm never doing anything to do with public speaking. Wasn't well, there something that says that, uh, like some people would rather die than public speak. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Isn't they it, say it's like the number one fear, number one fear like, over right? death. It, <laughs> it, it's like over all this like snakes yeah, and all yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is which is crazy to me. But yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was like a debilitating thing, and especially after that happened, then I was like, dude, never. Like, I'll, I'm I'm never gonna speak, you know, on, on a stage like that at all. Like, that's not me. That's not who I am. That's not you know. I'm terrified of it. You know, I'll figure something else out. But. So when I, when I discovered Augmentino and I discovered this new dream, this new destination, I'm like, holy crap, man, like I got, I got some things I got to overcome. Mm -hmm. And so like, I had this major fear, but the destination, the vision was so much more important to me than the fear that I was mm -hmm. facing. So I was like, well, there's no way around it. Got to go through it. Yeah. And so I started putting together a little, my own little personal development events where I do these little, I just put together like a 10 minute speech and I have like my brother and a friend put together a 10 minute speech. And we just invite friends and family to come have coffee and free donuts That's so cool. and come listen to us just to start breaking past yeah. the fear and learning yeah. how to structure something mm -hmm. so I can say it. And that's kind of where it all started for me. That's crazy. Um, wow. That's a lot to unpack. So one thing I did want to ask you was you had touched on it earlier, but I didn't want to um, interrupt you. Take me through a little bit, you know, because this is what the podcast represents, right? Having that talk with yourself. Take me through a little bit of the fears from yourself. And then maybe you did get some outside um, criticism or something. But coming through and being not a speaker, right? Mm -hmm. um, not not like an athlete or not mm -hmm. like, a, you know, whatever, you know, people yeah. have these backgrounds, like, mm -hmm. you know, built a multi-million dollar company, whatever. Because mm -hmm. I think that's usually where people go. They say, okay, I did... I did something great, mm -hmm. right? I set a record, you know, like I said, I built a multi-million dollar company. I'm this, this, and this. Now I'm going to go tell people how I did it. Sure. And I think what people don't look, or sorry, I think what people do look past is mm -hmm. I, I've already got some of that kind of criticism, right? What, well, you, what, what have you done, right? <laughs> yeah. But I think the ability to, yeah. to, to inspire someone, that is a fucking skill, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, if you can... If you can say something and have someone want to get up and go do something or or believe something different than before mm -hmm. they met you, that's a skill. Yeah. Tell take me through that a little bit cuz I think you know you and I connect a little bit on that because like I said I've gotten some criticism of like, "Well, what have you sure. done? You know, what's so motivational about you? Why do you th why do you think you can do that?" And and just want to say, you know, for the record, <laughs> you don't need fucking permission from anyone to do yeah. the things that you want to do. So that's just let's just get that out of the way, but go ahead and yeah. and you know, take me through a little bit of that. Yeah, it's not having a platform. That was probably one of my biggest stumbling blocks for a long time. Like, you know, I I, I kind of paraphrase everything that I did in a short period of time, but there was a lot of, you know, time spent in between you know, when I actually started speaking and when I got the idea, um, and that's the biggest stumbling block was that no platform. What are like, what do I have to say? What are people like, who's going to want to listen to me? And especially when I was younger, when I was still, you know, I was kind of, you know, kind of a party guy, you know, meaning like I enjoyed a good time, you know, like that's how people knew me. That's how my friends knew me. And so when I got into this personal development thing, uh, I started with writing a blog, like an inspirational blog, you know, and I would just be terrified of even posting my first article on Facebook. Cause I'm like all these people that know me as, you know, party, oh, Mike, good time, yeah. Mike, good time, Charlie. 
are now going to be like, what the hell, like, what do you have to say? And yeah, yeah, you know, what do you know about life or purpose or whatever? And so that was like one of the biggest things that I had to overcome was just, you know, what, what the heck are people going to think, especially these people that know me a certain way. I think that's one of the biggest things is that the, one of the biggest, you know, voices you're gonna have to overcome is that constant like how do people know me how do they perceive me the false self exactly let's 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 work on that a little bit um so my and you know again this is all aligns and that's why that's why i had michael on the podcast because michael's message uh aligns with mine a lot and i think it's it's really great for us to kind of have this dialogue and go back and forth you know i think that that is like the character, you know, I, you helped me with my speech, so you know, my, my message well, but like, mm-hmm. that's like the false self. I feel like that we yeah. build, right. That character that we display to the world, because this is easy, right. I can attach myself to it. Um, gives me, you know, some sort of like social significance, Status, like, yeah. boom, let's run with it. But you know, that that's not fulfilling, right. Mm-hmm. You know, but And again, we could argue that that's the pain that we feel, right? That's the sadness. That's the depression. Imagine you go your whole life without being yourself. Yeah. Right. And I always say like being, not being yourself will cost you a lot. It'll cost you your life. Yeah. That's good. Work, work a little bit on that with me and how we can kind of like break out of that because, you know, I did the same thing with the bike, right? I always battled okay, I've got this, I have this platform, this is how people know me. And then I started posting this, um, a very influential part of my journey. I started, you know, doing like that stuff. People were giving me slack about it. Shut the fuck up and do a wheelie. And I'm just like, (laughs) oh shit. I'm like, and because like this part of me is actually my true self, crazy enough, you know, I can go out and, you know, do all these things, have no issue, you know, battling whoever, doing whatever. But the moment, you know, I share my truth, yeah. I'm like all of a sudden sensitive, right? Yeah, yeah. And someone had said to me, I went to an event, hadn't been to an event in a couple of years. And this guy who's a close friend of mine somewhat was like, hey, man, you know, glad you're here. Because when you were posting all that motivational bullshit, I unfollowed you. Oh, man. And I was just like, oh, shit. Like, I kind of went home. I kind of archived mm. some stuff. I kind of took some stuff off my page because I'm like, again, who who the fuck do I think I am saying this kind of stuff, right? And turns out later on, I talked to him about it like a year and a half later. And I told him, I said, hey, dude, you know, you said some shit to me that really fucked me up. Like, I need to talk to you mm. about it. And he was like, I think I said that because I needed to hear what you had to say and I didn't want to. Mm. And that was like, wow, yeah. pivotal moment in my journey because I was like, there there's something here yeah so you know that's huge man take me through that i mean what what is what was this idea like what was the internal dialogue you know with yourself like that battle like same thing here people know me as this every time i post something i mean even since the speech since i've like all right this is where i'm going i'm driving Mm -hmm. this home this is what i want to do i know this is for me no engagement losing Mm -hmm. followers i've actually since the speech i've lost like three or four hundred (laughs) followers um but i'm like i have to go through like the weak Mm -hmm. ones have to weed themselves out which is how the world works right right um take me through a little bit of that how did you work through that how were you you know did you receive any criticism how were you able to battle those things yeah as far as criticism man i i think friends or acquaintances you know knew better than to say anything i've never had somebody like directly say that to me like yeah that I kind of envy that because, you know, it's like that creates a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. And I know you said it took you down for a yeah, little bit, yeah. but um, that kind of stuff, man, just fuels me, honestly. And okay. for me, I never had, like, I would have, you know, people say smart ass remarks on uh, online, but people I didn't know. I think people that knew me, they spoke their disbelief in me with their silence. Mm. So, like, if oh, I'm, yeah, yeah I'd have like friends. He knows how to fight, obviously. Exactly. That's probably <laughs> it. <laughs> No, so I'd have I knew I knew I knew when someone didn't believe in me or when they thought what I was doing was dumb or was just a uh, just a, f- a phase by their silence, and I would be like, you know, I'd be telling somebody, you know, something. I start I'd get into because I'd like read a book, and I'm like, oh my goodness, dude, the, I'm learning about the power of the mind and the power of words, and I'm just like, I, you know, like the more you learn, the more you want to like give it to somebody else and share it. Yeah. And then people would just like not respond to it and just like and then move on. To, and I, that's what I started learning very quickly. I'm like, all right they're not responding because they think it's bull crap or, you know, it's just a phase and, or they just don't think that, you know, that's something that I should be speaking on. So, so like, like I said, I'm, I never had, or somebody's like, you know, yeah. shut up. How but. did you, how did you work through that? Cause I think for me, even till now, 
I think the biggest thing that I could grasp onto was is that the man gave me this vision, right? So it's like people don't necessarily need to understand it, right? And mm-hmm. and it's like we're our mission is is to not be understood. It's to mm-hmm. change people's lives. So you don't necessarily need to know what's going on in here, right? Yeah. I don't I don't need affirmation basically yeah. fr- from you um yeah. it's kind of how i go with it because you know i'll talk sometimes like just yeah. in a crowd of you know of a few friends or a few you know people and you know in like a gathering and and people are looking at me like i'm nuts and i'm like <laughs> you know i'm like that's okay you yeah. know I, yeah, yeah. you have to yeah. be okay with that obviously you know you put yeah. yourself up for criticism and in, in yeah. what you do so what was like is there was there some sort of you know, mantra or something that you just, or it was just like, there was never a question. Like I'm just going through this. Yeah. For me, I set the goal and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I kind of just learned who to shut up around and you know, who I could share my thoughts around and in this journey with me. And it was, it was family. It was my brothers. It was being able to, you know, they always understood it. And so that's who I went to when I was, you know, and the cool thing is, cause we all kind of started going on this journey together. Cause like yeah, once and, one, yeah. we're all very close. So once one of us started like, reading and learning and studying business and then the other ones you know it would kind of like push everyone else because we're all very close yeah yeah Yeah, so but i learned around certain people i'm just like that's fine if you want to keep it a surface level bullshit conversation about nothing you know we'll keep it at that we'll talk about football we'll talk about politics you know we're just not gonna go deep we know that's not what we want exactly we know exactly And, and even the people that can only have those conversations we know we know you don't want that yeah right? like yeah. Uh, that that the surface level bullshit that kills yeah. me and i'm like i know you don't want this right yeah. i know yeah. you don't want to talk about this i know that you're just concerned that you're going to say something stupid yeah or concerned i'm not gonna i'm not gonna vibe with what you're saying or concerned yeah. and i just yeah yeah but it limits you too it, li- yeah. it limits because if you can't really get down to what someone believes or what drives them or what like you're never going to be you're never going to know them that well besides, you know, oh, this is my football watching buddy or something yeah. like that. And so it, yeah. it sucks. It limits relationships too. And I think those people start to fall off in your yeah. journey anyways, because there's, there's just no way that you can have this crazy amount of growth mentally, yeah. you know, emotionally, spiritually, all this. And those people, they, it just, the conversations and, and the gatherings and, and the, you know, the arrangements just become so uncomfortable because yeah, there's yeah, such yeah. a big gap that it's just like, it's dude, more this more isn't, awkward. <laughs> yeah, this isn't worth it anymore. Um, yeah. And you know, what's crazy about you, you know, I think, you know, and again, this is a part of kind of my message in, in this podcast is you, you talking and telling me about your journey, like you saying, I don't have a platform, right? I'm not an athlete. I, I you know, I'm not, a, I don't have a multimillion dollar company. I didn't do anything crazy. I'm not, a, you mm-hmm. know, a Guinness book of world record setter, but I'm going to do this thing that and be in this industry where people usually have a background. I'm going to yeah. be going up against CEOs, professionals, sure. you know, all this kind of stuff. I would argue that that is the dream, mm-hmm. right? Saying yeah. that I, I I'm coming into this as the guy that's not supposed to be here yeah. and then coming in the room. That's the dream. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah, yeah. it's not, I want to speak in front so, of, you know, I haven't hit that number where I've spoken in front of 10,000 people before. Yeah. Like, People always set these goals, but I, again, I, I want to argue that that is the dream. Like Wait, that's uncovering like- what you you don't you you have this like when you're sitting in your job, right? Yeah. You're like, I know this isn't for me. Mm-hmm. Uncovering that and whatever that looks like, or you know, I always use the the square block of ice sculpted into something, whatever yeah. your life is, right? Yeah. Or writing, you know, Brandon said like writing your story, writing your yeah. book. Um, that's the dream. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah, it's like you're living out your life, your life movie. It's like we kind of talked about, um, Brandon mentioned about, you know, like, I think you mentioned it was a Joe Rogan where it's yeah. like, pretend that your li- your life is a documentary, you know, there's always somebody recording you. I mean, that's what, like, my wife and I talk, you know, we always, you know, have the be- best conversations when we're like on a long drive or something, but that's what we, we talk about. It's like, man if we realize how, like what we're doing, what we're accomplishing, how far we've already come, I'm like, you could do a movie about it. Not because I'm saying like, Oh, look at me. I'm so special. I've done some, but meaning like that it's that journey. It's like, yeah. it's like, you know, you, you hear, it's always a really good story when you That's hear like, dragon. Oh, this guy, like, yeah, he left his, you know, waiter job and he just yep. sold everything went to Hollywood to try to act. Everybody loves and it's that. such an inspiring Everybody story. Everybody loves yeah. that shit. Yeah. Like, again, that's, that yeah. is the dream. Like exactly. that is arguably 
the and you know i say again it's, you know my story very well i always say that's the best part of yeah. the story like, it's like you said you're not you're you're sticking your nose in somewhere where everyone's going to tell you you don't you're belong here to, that's, and, then you, and that you know. is the dream yeah. like that is the best part of the fucking story the part where everyone yeah. wants to quit is the best part of the story the part yeah. where everyone says dude, that's not a good idea. Yeah. That's the best part of the story. The part where everyone says, mm, yeah. you're not qualified to do that. Yeah, yeah. And you do it anyways. That's the best part of the fucking story. Yeah. That is the dragon, right? That yeah. is, that is you becoming who you're like this. Like I said, like chiseling into who yeah, you're meant yeah, to yeah. be. Um, I just had a coffee with a, with a friend of mine and he was one of these guys that he came to my original, like when I was doing my free coffee and donuts events, awesome. he came, yeah, he was at one of my events and we had coffee. He was asking me some questions about marketing or something, but he's, he was like, dude, he's like, I've been watching you. He's like, you're still in this thing and you've made so much progress. He's like, I can't believe, you know, that like, he's like, I've been literally like, he's like, it's cool to see your actual journey. And he's like, and it's cool to see that it actually is happening for you. Awesome. And it was like, yeah, it was so good to hear, man. Cause I'm like, I don't do it for, you know, for people. Like yeah. I know where I'm going yeah. and I know what my destination is and I know what I'm working towards. So I don't need that affirmation, need that affirmation. but it's nice to hear that. Like, mess, like people are noticing yeah. and it's pushing people to like, well, crap. Like I want to do something with my life. Like if, if that nerd Mike can do it, you know, like, like I can do something too. So it's like your life, you selling out on your dream and going after it with everything that you have, you know, you're, you're going to wake people up to theirs. You're going to inspire people to, you know, go out and do something too. Well, so think, it was really cool to hear. I think that, I think that's what we're here for. Yeah. I mean, I would argue to say the biggest disservice you can do to the, to the collective is to not be yourself is to yeah. not be authentic is to not go for it. Like when you see people, especially men, right? I think, when we see people that we like that we're inspired by like for me i'm like why the fuck can i do that yeah i literally i, I don't i don't i'm not like jealous i'm not like i the only thing i think about is why didn't i start earlier yeah like why didn't i go for that like yeah. i was telling a kid the other day and you know we were even talking about it off camera people are literally out here living life exactly to the t at a, a the point of a pencil that small to the exactly the way that they want it mm -hmm. why are, there's no reason why anybody else okay, can't do yeah, it and yeah. i think you doing that and us in that pursuit is it gives per people permission and mm -hmm. then the proof right because i think whatever you look for you're going to find if you look look for reasons why it's not going to happen you're going to yeah. find them you're going to find people that have failed you're going to find people that have quit but you also if mm -hmm. you look for reasons why you think you can do it there's also people like yourself that are out here doing it that are out here writing books like yeah. you said they have no platform speaking in places where you didn't think you were supposed to be in now yeah. look where you're at right yeah do you know how many people have uh asked me about writing books and then went and actually got it done so Which it's just like awesome. just me doing it yeah. and going through it like it's like you're blazing a trail man and it, it's it's the best feeling ever to have somebody attribute kind of like we, we were talking about mm -hmm. Ahmadino in the beginning to have somebody attribute, Hey, I went and did this or I went and tried this thing because of something you said or something yep. you did, man. It's like, it's better than, you know, any payment or anything, man. It's, it's, it, it really is. It really is. Um, so go, go back to talking about, or that self talk, yeah. that internal dialogue. What were you thinking before Van talks, man? <laughs> oh my I don't gosh. know if I threw you off of where no. you were trying to take the conversation, um, but yeah, I do. I do want to ask you something, but yeah, I'll go through that. Um, Dude, the, the week leading up to that, I was yeah. like a wreck, bro, honestly. But I think... Let me pause right there. Yeah. A quick backstory. Nate was the only person out of all the people that wanted to get into speaking. Nate was the only person that actually did what I specifically said. Everyone that came to me like, hey, how do I you know, start speaking? How do I, you know, how do I get into this thing? I told everyone, I was like, go to Van Talks. Go to the, we have this local event. It's yeah. like a TED Talk. Go to it. You know, don't come, don't try to sit down and have coffee with me if you haven't at least tried that. Because yeah. like, if you're yeah. not willing to do that, you're, I'm not going to show you some I, I can even shortcut trick. I can even tell that backstory. And, you know, Brandon can attest to that, you know, I'm a little off in the head. Um, so <laughs> I've been in, I, I was recording videos in a park, trying to record motivational videos in a uh -huh. park for like one summer, right? I knew this is something I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. Again, I think it was just like the whole... I love wordplay, you know, the whole metaphor thing, the, the things that I felt when I would listen to my headphones and hear Eric Thomas, I felt like speaking mm. to me, I'm like, wow, 
what better thing that I feel like I can get into than to make someone else feel the thing that I felt. Hmm. I would go into parks trying to, like I said, trying to record these videos. I would exhaust a whole battery of my camera because I would keep <laughs> stuttering or I wouldn't like it. Yeah. Trying to get one 60 second video, I would yeah, yeah. run my whole. So, you know, fast forward a couple years, I was like, okay, I think I want to speak in front of people. And, uh, you know, a couple of events lined up. I, I ended up going to a new church and I was explaining to the pastor. He's like, Hey, you're new here. Like, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And he was like, Oh, we have a guy. His name's Michael. He does that kind of stuff. And I'm like, all right, let me track this Michael guy down. So I look up Michael on on Instagram and I message him, Hey man, you know, I heard you do this, whatever, you know, something I want to get into. I'd love to take you to coffee. And this is the best part about it is because is normal people would have taken this like as a, you know, a, a kick in the, a kick in the nuts. <laughs> and he goes, sorry, don't have time. Only have time, you know, for what I'm doing right now in my family. And I, like I said, Brandon can attest to me. I was like, all right, cool. This guy thinks he's going to get away from me. <laughs> um, so Wait. I always went to late service and the next week I go to early service and I see him, he's out front greeting people. I'm like, Hey, this is me. This I'm this guy. This is the guy that messaged you. I, I want your help. Yeah. And he's like, all right, do me a favor, sign up for this event. So I sign up for the event. I get in the event, whatever. And then as soon as he sees me getting the event, he starts helping me. And I yeah. think it's like this rite of passage that we kind of have to go through. And I was telling him, you know, I didn't take offense to it at all because I do the same with, thing with the bike. Mm -hmm. People are like, Hey, teach me how to wheelie. I would say, go crash first. Yeah. <laughs> if you come back yeah. after you eat the concrete and you still want to do this and your bike's broken, you're willing to put another thousand bucks into it to fix it and then come back to me. We'll talk. Yeah. So anyways, long story yeah. short, ends up helping me. Obviously he's my friend now. Um, and dude, leading up to that event. Yeah. I was like a wreck, but I kept telling myself like, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like, Again, these feelings are the dream, right? Yeah, yeah. I had gone through, and they'll be there forever, man. <laughs> and, and and you know that's, I had that's gone how you know through, you're doing something right. I exactly that's what yeah. I was gonna say. I had gone through months and months of times in my life where I didn't feel that feeling, right? I didn't mm -hmm. feel excited. I didn't mm -hmm. feel nervous. My heart wasn't beating crazy. My palms weren't sweating. That means you're alive, yeah. right? That means you're doing something important to you. Yeah. I feel like the only time people escape that, that feeling sometimes. And for me, many times in my life when I was asleep, like mm. I can't get away from this feeling that I'm just a, a walking I, I soulless, like being mm. unless I'm asleep. And that, that leading up to that was powerful. Cause I was yeah. like, I know that if I make it through this, like, this is what I truly want. And mm. I, I dude, I wanted to drop out. Um, I got sick a couple days before because I was stressing myself out so much. Yeah, even yeah. even day of, I was just just a nervous wreck. But I was like, I know, like, come on, bro, you have to get up there. You you're gonna say the first couple lines, and then it's gonna be a lot easier. And yeah, I mm. I was um I really really had to convince myself that I wanted to do yeah, it, yeah. um because I knew I did, you know. Yeah. But um, it was hard. It it was hard. No lie. It it was very the, difficult. The biggest thing, man, is if you say no once it'll be 10 times easier to say no again. Yep. That's, that's the one thing I told myself was like, when I got my opportunity, I'm like, man, if I back out now, I will never, I might as well just stop with this dream. Anything. Yeah. Because it, like, it'll just be easier to say no. So it's like that, the hardest time is to say yes to an opportunity. A scary one is that first time. Yep. Cause once you say it once and you commit to it and you get it done, it, get, it becomes easier. It's still scary, but it's, you're not going to have that. You know, I'll, I'll do it next time. You know, like I'll, I'll, I'll take the next opportunity. It's like, no, you no, won't. You're no, you're not. Yeah. If you said no at that hardest time, like you, you're not either not going to get another opportunity or you're going to say no again. You're going to find another reason to back out again. And so that, that was huge for me. I was like, doesn't matter how, I don't care if I'm thrown up before, like I'm going up there. You have yeah, to do it. You have yeah. to do and it. And I think that <laughs> element of life, again, especially for a man, I feel like is so important because what I, I realized like, this is the kind of stuff that people do for like, quote unquote game day. Right. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, I signed myself up for this. Yeah. I was on, I was, I was on my shit. Right. Yeah. I was getting up every day. I was working on my speech every single day. I was, you know, I was going to the gym and I was treating it like, you know, I'm, I'm getting up, I'm training for this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm training for this event. And I think oftentimes if we don't sign ourselves up for these type of things and you don't get into these quote unquote game, mm 
this is when you really get locked in, right? Yeah. When you're and and so if you can feel. I, I thought about it. I'm like, wow, I need to fill my life with more things like this yeah. because I was so, I was prepared. I was excited. I was yeah. nervous. Like that is, that's what makes you feel alive. That's, that's like, like that, that we're yeah. preparing for the whole battle thing that's wired yeah. within us. You know, I, I love that you said that. That's exactly what I tell McKenzie every time. Like, you know, I'm getting nervous about to step out somewhere. It's just like, I'm like, what other, like, if I can have a lifetime of these kind of moments, like think about looking back on my life yes. later. Yeah. Cause you know, like, you have a couple of weekends in a row where you don't do much. You kind of do the same routine. You forget. Somebody's like, what'd you do last weekend? Like, oh, I, I don't remember. Uh, hunt out with family. Like, it all blends in. Yep. But when you had a different conversation, a new something new, you were in a new environment, even something as simple as that, like having a meeting someone new, like, like you I remember can't wait that. to tell you about it. Yeah, yeah, you remember that. You Like, it's imprinted in your mind. But especially doing something that scares the crap out of you, it's mm. just like these are moments of your life that – you're going to remember, you might not remember everything back in your life, you know, looking back when you're 90 years old, but you'll remember those and moments they, when you're about to walk out. And I truly feel like they have to happen. Yeah. I, I re, like, I really yeah. do. Like I said, I, I think the scariest things and the things that we, that we want to turn away from yeah, are the yeah. things that make us feel alive. Yeah. One of the principles in here is, yeah, let's uh, jump into that. Yeah. Run towards the things or, um, I forgot how I worded it in there, but sometimes we run from the things the very things that we should be running towards. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's exactly it, man. I, I'll, I'll be like getting ready to step out and I'm like somewhere deep in the back of my mind. <laughs> it'll be like, dude, you know, they haven't called your name yet. You could just book it right now. <laughs> Like you could go back to your hotel. The <laughs> yeah. conference organizer doesn't know which room you're in. Yeah. You could lock yourself in there, wait till the conference is over. They'll call a hundred times, but you could wait it out and you could just go home. Like li there's that thought, but it, it's never, I never entertain it enough. Cause I'm like, it actually scares me to entertain it. Cause yeah. I'm like, what if I, <laughs> what if, you do what if I should do it? No. So I'm like, I'll have that somewhere, but my body stands still. And I'm like, I'm going for it. Like I've trained myself to a, like, we, you know, speaking of that dialogue, that talk, you know, it's like, I don't care what's going on up here. Like I'm holding myself firm and I'm taking those steps. As yep. soon as they call my name, I'm taking those steps forward. And once that first couple of seconds happens, then it's, it's all over. Awesome. Then you, you're present and you're ready to go. Love it. Let's talk about some of your work a little bit. So you touched on the, um, the book, maybe you can mm -hmm. touch on it a little more, like some of your favorite parts of it and some of your favorite, um, like messages that you pull from it. And then let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your speaking and, and, um, what basically what your your you know your keynote is kind of like if you give us maybe like a little bit of a summary i know you have principles so let's, sure, let's talk sure. about the book a little bit so the book like i mentioned at the beginning uh this is the first time i wrote as myself so it was you know it was vulnerable and it was also kind of like you know because it's, you know i'm doing it self-published i also want to know i also want to make sure that it's marketable so i i, I kind of struggled with i'm like you know this is my personal journey like are people going to want to read this because my other books are just like fictional stories you know, in, in a different time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, is this going to be something that people are going to enjoy? Is this going to be something? Cause it's just personal to me. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about my fears of speed. I'm talking about sleepless nights. I'm talking about being the only one at the conference out of the whole five keynote speakers that are going to be there. I'm probably the only ones laying awake at night wondering what yeah. the hell I'm doing there. Yeah, and that I don't like, belong. Oh, it's just a regular day. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, why am I feeling that way? You know? So it's like, I, I share a lot of more of those personal struggles that I had with, and insecurities that I had with getting into speaking uh, and that kind of a thing. So, um, yeah, so it was really fun. It was kind of a vulnerable book to write, but it was really fun because I was like wondering if it was going to be marketable. But I don't know, from what I get, like the kind of emails and messages that I get from people reading it, it's just like, dang, dude, I hit yeah. I hit something something good uh, uh, with it. I think I, it, it sparks something in yeah. people. Well, I want to ask you, so, and, and I – and I think it's great that, that we've both done this because we both have that experience. But, you know, when I was telling other, like for you, right. When I tell you what I went through leading up to, to that event, mm -hmm. you're like, Oh yeah. Like you yeah, kind of yeah. get like excited. You're like, Oh, I remember that. You yeah, know, yeah. I remember my first one. I remember, when I tell other people, they're like, man, you didn't sleep for how long, you know, like, Oh my God, like you got sick. Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like, but I'm like, for me, I, after I was done, you know, yeah. obviously I had to get, I threw the fire and run out of the building and get cleaned off and, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, and I had to sit back and go, dude, how fucking awesome, how lucky am I to be able to do something that yeah. actually keeps me awake at night? Yeah. Right. How yeah. lucky am I to be able to do something that, that makes me want to run and hide and, yeah, and yeah. never go back? Do, you know, do you feel that way? Like, like when you feel those feelings, like, 
Is there something yeah. that goes on in there that says, dude, like, this is it. Like, yeah. like, you know, like you said, like we run for the things that we need to run towards. Like yeah. how, how, how do you see that? Dude, I, sh- I, I'm, uh, I think I put it in there. I hope, uh, I uh, <laughs> hope I worded it the same way, but I always say like the sleepless night, the nights that I'm like tossing and turning, you know, Mackenzie's sleeping next to me. She's, you know, passed out and I'm just like rolling over and over. Like I cannot sleep. You know, because it's like leading up to an event that I'm and like every time I speak, it's like a different audience. It's like, oh, these guys are like city planners. So they're like yeah. a bunch of like 60 year old, you know, I'm like, what the, like, what am I going to teach them? So like I have all these thoughts start going through and so I can't sleep. And so I have this like anxiety. And I'm just like laying, you know, just awake, you know, I cannot fall asleep. But I'm like, but I remember going back to that cubicle sitting, oh, this you know, is good. Sunday evening I'm going to bed knowing I have to go to that same crappy job tomorrow. Wow. And I'm like, I also wasn't sleeping. Wow. So I'm like, I would rather wow. have sleepless nights, you know, because I'm about to do something that scares the hell out of me than to lose sleepless nights because I have nothing to live for. If that mic, can he still drop that mic if it's on a stand? <laughs> you got me on that one. I was literally sitting there like, what are you talking about? Not drop this mic right Incredible, now. <laughs> bro. That is oh, wow. No, yeah. T- t- let's yeah, let's say that one more time, bro. Say that one more time. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's this I is would, what this is what this is why we do this. What we do yeah. is, is what he just said. He literally that was so powerful. Yeah. Uh, I would take the sleepless nights of anxiety because I'm about to do something scary and something that's totally uncomfortable for me being in a room where I think I don't belong or, I, you know, people have told me I don't belong than to lose and have sleepless nights knowing that I got nothing to wake up to tomorrow. Cause I had both. I was on both, both sides of that. Yeah. Brandon, do you, do you believe that it was necessary for you to go through that first job of that mundane oh, uh, nice. sort nice. of uh, ritualistic lifestyle that you just, you knew it wasn't for you, but that gave you the insight and the motivation mm. and the starvation to to get to where you are now. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it woke something up in me that probably wouldn't have if if I was in a you know, maybe if I was in a IT job where it was just a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more Google ish like, you know, and had more a better environment, I might have yeah, just been asleep for the rest of my life. Kind of yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it was because it was so depressing and so miserable. I think it was like, it was kind of like, you know, I'm also, I, you know, I'm a believer. So for me, it was like God, like throwing me like, all right, sit a while and think, yeah. you know, <laughs> like you're going to yeah, waste more. About what you're yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to waste more time. Like think about it for a little bit. I'm like a little bit of my backstory. I'm, I, I'm from, I was born in the Soviet union. So we came here when I was two years old, my grandpa, you know, the siege of Leningrad in world war two, he fought. It was when the Germans encircled the city of it's today is called St. Petersburg. It used to be called Leningrad. And basically the Germans had that encircled for three years, basically trying to starve the Russians out because they couldn't take over. The Russians were fighting very hard. So the Germans just cut off all supply trains, all, you know, all ways of getting food. There's 3 million civilians and soldiers trapped inside the city. And so Hitler's plan was just like, well, we don't have enough camps to take all these people. We're just going to starve the hell out of them. They'll die. They'll, mm-hmm. you know, we'll take care of it. Um, and so that was like one of the biggest battles in World War II for the Russians. It was like a big turning point. Stalingrad and Leningrad were two of the biggest, and Leningrad is one of those. My grandpa was there. Like my grandpa was in, literally got pulled from a muddy field because he didn't what have. Did a, we say in the trenches, like yeah, he was. He didn't have a gun. Like they sent him. They were just sending guys to run at the front lines. So wow. they, you know, like you see in the, that movie uh, Enemy at the Gates, where they give yep. him one. They give one guy a gun. The other two guys a pack of five bullets. Mm-hmm. That was him. Wow. So he had nothing, and in the morning, a German soldier picked him up, arrested him, and he spent four years in Dachau. And so I'm like, for me, it was just like even a bigger thing. I'm like, dude, so I'm like, this is where I come from. My parents fought, escaped communism. My grand, my grandfather, you know, fought for the, you know, fought in World War II, like survived four years of concentration camps. All of this that they went through, and I'm here in the United States, and I'm living with no purpose, and I'm just like wasting my life away. It was like it was just it was like a double, like a double, you know, kind of uh, whammy on me. And I was just like, man, dude, you got to do some, like you have so much more wow. to give, so much more to offer. That you know, it's like you got to do something. And I'm also like like we mentioned before, like I'm part of a really good. We're really cl- thirteen kids in the family, so seven brothers, five sisters. Uh, 
uh, every time I say that when I speak, people are always like, what the? <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. But all very close. And so to me, I look at that as that whole, remember we talked about the, the parable of the talents yep. where it's just yep. like, I was the, I was the servant that was given the five talents. I was blessed with all this stuff. So I'm like more, and you say it very well in some of your videos, like, to those who are given, or to those who much, much is, given, is given, much, much more is going to be expected. Yep. And I'm like, dude, I'm this. I have so much more that's going to be expected of me because of where I came from, because of what I've been given. And I'm like, and here I am, just like counting down the days till Friday, so I can, you know, have a couple of drinks and you know, yep. lose my mind for a little bit and forget mm. that I'm going back to work wow. on you know wow. on Monday. So, um, mm. dude, no. holy shit, yeah, I'm like blown away by that. Dude, this guy has me speechless. Yeah, <laughs> that. That's that's perspective. So right that's there, a part of his, you know, that's a part of his keynote. I've heard you say that yeah, in your yeah, keynote. Yeah. And, you know, I do that and I have somewhat in, in myself, even, you know, before meeting you have kind of have that sense of, and I think it really comes down to honor, right? So mm -hmm. like, you know, I have Japanese blood. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I looked into like, you know, my whole message with the one of 400 trillion is like, you're here for a reason. Right. And mm -hmm. I, you know, the Bible talks about that too. I think it's Proverbs that you yeah. know, he says that, you know, God has created us purposefully, right. Yeah. Exactly how you're supposed to be. So I'm like, okay, this is an accident. Right. So yeah. I look back and who were the warriors of, of, of my, you know, blood, mm -hmm. the samurais, every time they fought, it was a battle to the death. Right. Mm -hmm. So I looked at myself and I'm like, and you know, I feel like it was no coincidence with the bike. Right. Because yeah. I'm like, every time I go out on the bike, I'm risking my life. And I looked at it like the same way you're looking at mm -hmm. it. Like, is this really all that my life has for me? Yeah. Right. Am I really waking up afraid to be, and I, and I, you know, I, I have a spiritual background as well. So I firmly believe like, as you know, as a mission based spiritual man, like we don't, we don't, oh, not the word fold. Um, we just don't subscribe to things that are, that are built by man, right? Mm -hmm. We subscribe to things that are built by God. So am I really going to sacrifice what I believe my life to be for a piece of paper? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Every day. And I have this warrior blood, right? You have this soldier blood within you. I have this warrior blood within me and this is going to be my fight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fight for, I'm just going to fight for money. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all your life has for you. And I think that, and I argue this as well. And I say this to people, there's like a me life is metaphorical to me. I think the Bible is metaphor. I think everything mm -hmm. that we go through, there's some sort of message that can be pulled. Um, you know, even the, yeah. the original guys, uh, self-development guys, like with every, you know, um, Neville Goddard and, uh, um, Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill with every, you know, there's a seed of equivalent gain with every, yeah. you know, horrible or, you know, traumatic experience. And, I think, you know, people talk about like the traditional or the, um, the generational like sickness, quote unquote, or pain that's passed down. And I believe it's just a metaphor. Like the men, the men in your family were supposed to take that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And now as generations go on, it gets harder and harder and harder to take that responsibility. And then the next son has to deal with it. The next, and you know, I tell my son all the time and I'm so lucky and I'm so blessed that I have something has given me this wisdom, you know, meeting you, meeting all the people being in the field that, that we're in. Mm -hmm. And I tell my son all the time, you know, he, he can barely talk. And I tell him like, you're going to carry the torch. Mm -hmm. Like you have a great responsibility, like, and it, yeah. and it's an honor, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. that, like you said, this book talks about it greatly that the things that we're supposed to do, yeah. we run from. But it's, it's within, as a man that I believe taking that responsibility is where, that's where the fulfillment is. Yeah. That's success. Um, uh, so Jordan Peterson said it really awesome. I don't want to butcher his quote, but he's like, life is not about, I'm told, I might be butchering, but it's like, life is not about finding happiness. It's about finding something to, or something to carry or something like that. He's basically saying like, you need, responsibility. like, yeah, yeah, you need, like the more responsibility you can take on, the more, the more of of a person you become, yeah, the more fulfillment yeah, you yeah. have, the more you have to become in order to carry that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's so much more. Comes. It's like the easier of a life we create for ourselves, the worse we're doing. I don't have kids yet, but I'm like the easier I'm going to make, you know, their life, the less they're going to learn, the less they're going to yep. become. Yeah. You know, I've, it's a disservice. Yeah. yeah growing up, my dad, you know, <clears throat> Soviet era guy, you know, like he'd wake us up Saturday morning, 7 a.m. We're hacking trees down, you yeah. know, in the backyard. Yeah. We're complaining and everything. We'd rather be in bed, but yeah. like, that's how we were raised. And so, it sucks, man. It sucks to see. And, you know, you got, and, you know, I'll have 
children soon one day too i hope but like you have yeah it's a big responsibility on you to pass that on to him so yeah. that he you know uh, and it's crazy because he doesn't understand but we're both feeling that pressure yeah right because i'm yeah. like i'm the i'm the first one right yeah. no one in my family took this responsibility no one wanted yeah. to teach us about this kind of stuff right so i'm feeling it just as much as him and i always tell him like you and me are going to do this together yeah. like you know like i said he can barely talk but if I don't raise him in that, in that environment and, and yeah. having that, like, you know, I want him, you know, being, you know, young, four or five, six years old, like, yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to carry the torch. Like, yeah. you know, this is my responsibility to take this on. I'm supposed to do all these things and I have to continue yeah. the legacy and continue the name. But, um, let's talk a little bit about your, your keynote, right? So give me maybe one of the one. Of, I know, obviously you it's 12, right? 11 so, principles. 11 yeah. principles. Yeah. So yeah. give me your favorite one and kind of break it down okay. a little bit for me because we don't want to go through the obviously you know we don't want to give your all your nuggets away yeah yeah so i would say the the first one and that because that goes along with the theme of your podcast cool. too it's it's words spoken set life in motion and so obviously that's not a concept i made up you know it's the way you talk the way you think shapes everything in your life so the biggest thing for me starting out in this dream wasn't that i didn't have opportunity even though i didn't see opportunity anywhere it wasn't that i didn't even believe in myself because I didn't, but I still was willing to push, you know, and try different things. But it was, it was that, that dialogue in here. I knew like, if I didn't get that fixed up here, like it would, yeah, you would have kept telling yourself, Oh, there's no opportunities for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. What am I thinking? Yeah. Right? I'll just go back to my cubicle. Exactly. Like, what was I thinking? Cool. Exactly. Yeah. And so that the first thing I knew that I had to take care of, man, when I was, cause those, the, the keynotes built out or the 11 principles are from my first book. But yeah, when I was writing that, they were written out as declarations, but it, it was kind of like, yeah, it's just like, if I want, right now I got, you know, like two, it's like you have two voices, you know, you got, you know, the ones that's telling you, hey, like, do it, dude, why not, why not you, like, why can't you, why wouldn't, like, you should go try something, like, why can't you do this, what, you know, these these guys are doing and immediately you got the other one that pipes up that starts listing off all the reasons for why you can't. Yeah. And it's like, until you can get those two working for you in unison, like you're going to, you're going to be battling. And it, I think it's a lifelong battle. Cause I don't think like, you know, I've been speaking for a while and I still have, you know, those doubts, but I like, I've just learned, like I will literally almost verbally over out talk mm -hmm. the voice that yeah. I don't want <laughs> to be well, speaking for me. Yeah. Like, and again, I always say this, like for whatever anybody <clears throat> believes in, but I feel like that's the enemy. Like, yeah. Him, him, yeah. Like, Again, this is for me that that's a metaphor that I can that I can place a material on that that I can like actually physically go to battle with every day, right? Mm -hmm. Like when when you have those thoughts, it's like, nah, like you're not gonna beat me. Like you don't yeah. want me to do that. Yeah. And it's like, of course you wouldn't want me to. I'm gonna help people, right? Yeah. Of course you wouldn't want me to. I'm gonna change people's lives. Of course you don't want me to yeah. do this. Like, you know, and I have that that and and again that's why this podcast came came to fruition it was yeah. like that those were the things that i was dealing with like no you are meant to do this right yeah. there is and i would argue too people think i think looking from your perspective like from even for how in the journey that you and i are on like how much more you're ahead of me i think people will look and go well it's a lot easier for michael and i would argue that it's harder hmm. as you get into more power and more service and more help that you become more of a problem for that yeah. metaphorical you got enemy, more right? opposition so yeah. it's like yeah exactly when you're yeah. not doing shit <laughs> i mean really yeah, like, when you're not doing shit what battles are you really exactly. facing you're right? not what? you're not ruffling any feathers you're not exactly exactly yeah. so yeah. and i also you know you and i and i'm you know i have this like extreme sports background so i'm an extreme person and we had this conversation in your living room but i would argue like as a man if you're not an offering like if you mm -hmm. don't take your truth and express it in service to others is what I say, like expect misery. Right? Yeah. And I just, because I believe that nothing is ours, right? This platform is not ours. That's why I want to share it. It's been given yeah. to me. The wisdom has been given to me. The wisdom has been given to you. It's been given to you and I for a reason, yeah. not to keep it in here and to be a mercenary, but to share it. Yeah. And I think if you don't, again, I think that the pent up wisdom and the pent up things. And, and I would argue also that the pain that we feel is like, you know, like you said, when you're in your cubicle, yeah. that's just a reminder. Yeah. I don't think it's anything bad. I think it's just a tap on the shoulder. Hey, you don't like this here. Like, yeah. like why more, are you not, why are you not more. doing what I sent you here to do? Right. Yeah. But it's your, and even the book that I'm reading right now, wild at heart, which I was going to tell you about, mm -hmm. he says that none of the characters in the Bible were given a blueprint. 
they were all just given kind of like, Hey, I need you to do this. Right. It wasn't like you were going to get the step-by-step guide. That was the journey yeah. to figure out what you were supposed to do. Um, and so for some of them, a long journey, a really long exactly. journey. <laughs> yeah. we, have, we, have, we haven't lived, yeah. we haven't lived long enough for, for what, just the journey part of what exactly and most of some of those dudes had to go through. Yeah. <laughs> Which is it, And again, the metaphor, like if, man, if they yeah. could go through this and yeah. I had a friend that I reached out to, I talked to you on the day of my speech and I had another guy. I was like, I know I need to talk to this guy. Mm-hmm. His name's Jason. And I called Jason in the morning. I'm like, Hey dude, you know, I'm giving, I just got my haircut. You know, I'm giving my speech today. I need you. That's the most and, important thing. Yeah. Haircut, yeah, you yeah, get haircut, haircut, yeah. You got to look good, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I reached out to him and, and I'm so glad I did. And I was on FaceTime with him. I said, dude, like, I need something here, bro. I need, yeah. you know, I know you're going to come through for me. And he was telling me, and I don't know this part of the, of the book, but he said that Moses was sent to spread the word. Right. I believe. Mm-hmm. And he said, but he had a speech impediment and God told yeah. him like, I gave you your tongue. Yeah. Like don't trip. And I was just like, wow. I was like, I knew you were going to come yeah. through for me, but I didn't <laughs> know it was awesome, going to be man. like this. Yeah. And I kept telling myself before my speech, like, I'm here for a reason. Like you yeah. put me here. Like, you know, and I had to kind of like, I think it's in, in those moments where guys like us understand that there's something greater than us. Because mm-hmm. when you're that scared, like for me, when mm-hmm. I was that scared, I was like, I'm a, I have to give this to somebody else yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. carry this weight because yeah. right now I want to run. Yeah, right. Right yeah. now, everything is telling me, Brandon took a video of me where I was upstairs and I was pacing and I, and I was just like, if I don't give this to somebody else, I'm going home. Yeah. And that's where I was like, okay, I need to, there's something out there that's greater than me. That's allowing me to do this. Yeah. And I think that's what allows us to serve other people. So tell us a little bit what you have going on right now and where we can find you and you know, what you have going on next. Um, everyone's been asking me if I'm writing a fifth book yet. Not yet. I, I like to bounce around a couple ideas before something really, really clicks. Cause I know if I, you know, just jump on every little idea that I have, if I run out of inspiration somewhere along the way, you know, it's, you know, it's gonna, I'm going to burn myself out if I'm yeah. not writing something that's really, you know, deep. So I'm kind of just bouncing a few ideas around. So I'm not working on a book right now. Um, but we're just pushing the speaking thing. So I'm going, going to Boston on, on December 2nd. So it's a huge opportunity for me because awesome. this is, you know, these are, these are people that I've been talking to for four years that kept ignoring me. Wow. And I knew I needed to get to them to this conference because this is a, like a conference, a gathering of a bunch of uh, like school administrators and stuff. So people that, uh, that look for speakers for their schools, not just for wow. students, but also for their staff. Awesome. And so I'm like, dude, I got to get into that. And so randomly out of the blue, this lady is like, wait, is this Michael that wrote the Mount of Olives? Like she, I, I, I'm like, what are the chances of that? Cause it's not like I, I've sold, you know, multiple millions of copies, you know, that it would be that popular of a book, Yeah. but just by chance, somebody that we've been talking to for four years, she's she read happened book. to and that's the only reason she responded she, we were oh, they were ignoring my emails that. for four years man can you believe yeah that? yeah and finally mckinsey asked mckinsey i was like dude get on a call with them and she caught somebody and it's like hey we're gonna send another email to you guys can you know check our email and, and yeah so it was, it was crazy that's incredible but yeah just we're just working on the speaking thing man working on trying to get our 2023 year booked out and awesome. yeah get speeches on schedule and uh, people can find me on Instagram. I got my old Instagram account deleted. I didn't get hacked. It just, I logged into, I was on it when it got removed. See, yeah. I was just like on it. Yeah. And I refreshed it and it was just wasn't there. No way. Yeah. Yeah. You were on your phone. I was on Instagram and it just went like, I tried to refresh it and it just went like you were logged out of your account. I was like, what the heck? I try to log back in. It's like, this account doesn't exist. I'm like, wow. So I had my no wife way. check. Yeah. Crazy. I don't post anything political. I don't post anything weird. So I'm like, I have no idea, but Weird. yeah, so I had to restart. But anyways, yeah, Instagram, uh, just at the Michael Ivanov. Awesome. Um, that's probably the best. That's where I hang out the most and spend cool. too much, too much time on there. <laughs> appreciate, I appreciate you coming by, bro. Really. Um, I think we gave a lot of value here. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like subscribe and comment, share it with a friend. This will be on Apple podcasts and Spotify, and we will catch you guys in the next one. You'd appreciate your time. Mate.